Good evening everybody and welcome to the video. I know you guys are really liking all the common interview questions on each particular topic. This topic is about Amazon SQS. So let's get started uh, with the video. So the first question you will be asked if you essentially have mentioned SQS in your resume or anywhere is what is SQS? And here is the answer that you want to deliver. Amazon SQS is a fully managed message queuing service that enables you to decouple and scale microservices, distributed systems and serverless application, right? This is uh, what you want to say, right? The next obvious question would be, uh, let me just go over the SQS really quick. Okay, so the next question is, could you tell me about visibility timeout? What exactly is the visibility timeout? You want to say visibility timeout sets the length of time that the message received from a queue by one consumer will not be visible to the other message consumer. That means whenever a message is being processed, another consumer won't be able to see that particular message. The, the interviewer will ask you, okay, so what is, if, if you have a Lambda as a consumer, what do you recommend the visibility timeout should be? You want to say, ideally, sir, according to AWS, the visibility timeout should always be twice the timeout of Lambda, which means if your Lambda is, uh, if you have a, a set timeout on Lambda for five minutes, your visibility should be greater than or equal to 10 minutes. That is your answer. Then the next question is, message retention period what is message retention period and how and and what is the maximum uh, for how for how many days you can store the message in the queue right so you want to say uh, message retention essentially allows the data or a message uh, to be in a queue for set uh, amount of days by uh, uh, amazon sqs queue allows you to store that message for 14 days right which means the consumer can pull for the data from the queue within that 14 day period after which the message is discarded, okay? The next uh, question is, what is the maximum size of a message in an SQS? The answer is 256 kilobyte. Okay, so what if the message exceeds more than 256? You wanna say there are a couple of options we could try. The first obvious option is we could store the message on Amazon S3 right? And then have the key essentially in uh, the SQS. So the lambdas are going to read the data from the S, uh, S3 and process it if the message size exceeds more than 256 kilobyte. That is your answer. The next question is, could you talk about delivery delay uh, in SQS? What is this delivery delay? Sir, the delivery delay is that uh, as soon as, you know, the producer will insert the message, those message won't be up, won't be visible to the consumer for that much amount of time. The message would be essentially delayed. That is essentially delivery delay. They might ask you, okay, why do you want to do that? There might be several use case because sometimes what happens is maybe your consumers are not able to cope up with the amount of messages that are coming in. Maybe you want to delay the messages during those time, right? So essentially delivery delay allows you to delay the messages uh, for your consumer. What is a receive message wait time? Or what is long polling and short polling? Please explain. Sir, whenever there's a message in the uh, AWS SQS, there is an internal polling lambda. Ideally, the time interval ranges from one second to 20 seconds. One second essentially says that it's a short polling and 20 seconds means it's a long polling, which means lambda is gonna poll for any new messages after that much amount of time, that is 20 seconds, which is also called as long polling. Okay, so what's the advantage of long polling? Why would I use that? Sir, you would use long polling because in scenarios when you want to save cost, long polling will essentially allow you to save cost on your SQS. Okay, that's great. Now let's move on. Uh, could you tell me what is a DLQ? Well, DLQ or dead letter queue is a service or a simple basically a queue which allows you to essentially store failed event, right? from the consumer into a into an SQS. So basically, if needed, you could essentially reprocess that later on, or you could essentially notify users through an SNS, or you could store it on S3, the failed items, by attaching a Lambda integration. Uh, DLQ essentially allows you to store your messages up to 14 day, that is your retention period. And if needed within those 14 days, you could basically point your messages back to the source queue and try to reprocess that. Okay, that's great, all that is great, okay. Now, uh, what is uh, a difference between a FIFO queue and an SQ, uh, and a regular standard SQS queue? You wanna say, uh, that's a great question. FIFO queue essentially are used in, 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 in scenarios where the order is important. 
if uh, you want to process the messages in the order in which it has been received, in those scenarios, you will be using a, a, a FIFO queue. You also want to say that um, the throughput of a FIFO queue is much lesser than compared to standard queue. Throughput of a sta FIFO queue is about 3000 messages per second versus standard has much more throughput than the FIFO queue. All right, I'm just making sure if I have missed anything. I think these are some of the common you know, questions that you might be asked on, an, uh, you know, on an SQS. And again, I'll leave this links as well in the description. Here there are some of the common questions. These are very basic questions, right? What are the limitations of SQS? Can you explain me how messages are stored in SQS, right? Uh, how will you know if the message has been successfully added to the queue? Basically, you'll receive a token, right? Whenever you insert a message, you'll receive a token. If you get the token, which means message uh, is accepted, right? How can you ensure high available? So, you know, just basic questions, I recommend you to check that out. But these are some of the common questions that essentially I have answered in this video. I hope this video will help you. Um, you know, these are some of the common questions. Please try to prepare for them. Please try to know all these answers, right? Uh, if you simply go blank in the interview, uh, that simply shows that you, you have essentially either uh, made up your resume with or padded up your resume with a lot of words that you don't don't even know right so understanding all the items in detail and answering them is is very crucial right understand what is delivery delay understand what is visibility timeout uh, retention period maximum message size uh, dlq uh, dlq redraft policy all these stuff will essentially uh, is, is important for nailing your interviews thank you so much i hope you are enjoying all these videos I'll leave all the other videos, for example, DynamoDB and Lambda, common interview question in the description. So if needed, you can check. I have a lot of other videos on, uh, you know, a lot of Amazon services like EventBridge, Global Endpoints, Glue, S3, SQS, SNS, and much, much more. I hope you are enjoying all these contents. With that being said, guys, keep smiling, keep learning. Knowledge is power. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.